In the heart of the Mediterranean, during the time of the Republic and Empire, lay the city of Rome, a thriving metropolis that became the center of an empire that spanned three continents. The ancient Romans are remembered for their monumental achievements in law, engineering, and military conquests, but their way of life was equally remarkable. The Romans developed an advanced society that embraced a unique blend of customs, beliefs, and values. They were master builders, with their roads, aqueducts, and monumental architecture still standing today. They had a sophisticated legal system, and their language, Latin, had an enormous influence on European languages. Roman society was characterized by a strict hierarchy, with the emperor at the top, and slavery was a ubiquitous part of life. However, the Romans also enjoyed a rich cultural life, with their theater, gladiatorial games, and public festivals. The story of ancient Rome is a fascinating one that continues to captivate and inspire people to this day. This is the Fudge Network, and in this episode, you'll learn about fascinating details of life in ancient Rome that you definitely weren't taught in school. You'll find out what the Romans ate on holidays, how they used the bathroom, how they cleaned their teeth, and many other unexpected facts about ancient Rome. Public Toilets it's sure to be interesting for many people to learn how things were with such an everyday thing as the toilet in ancient Rome several thousand years ago. What did it look like, what was used for toilet paper, and what about the sewage system? One of the most unexpected facts is that the sewage system in ancient Rome was remarkably similar to modern one. The Romans used advanced, for their time, covered drains that carried waste out of the city. This innovation helped to spur the growth of cities and populations, as people could make use of numerous public toilets and baths. However, ancient Roman toilets were vastly inferior to modern ones in other respects. For example, public latrines looked like dark rooms with benches along the perimeter, with over a dozen holes. These latrines were typically used by commoners, while the upper classes had individual toilets. Despite the existence of public latrines, Many Romans simply threw their waste into the streets, which contributed to the spread of infections and diseases. Instead of toilet paper, the Romans used an item called a tersorium, which was a stick with a sponge on the end. The tersorium was reusable and used by several people a day. It was kept in public latrines in a solution of salt and vinegar, but this didn't do much to disinfect or clean the item. Urine was reused. The ancient Romans actively reused urine to clean clothes and even their teeth. Many modern cleaning products, powders, and other household chemicals contain a substance called ammonia. It does an excellent job of fighting dirt and stains. However, the ancient Romans did not have modern technology and industry to produce ammonia. But they found a way. The thing is, our urine contains a large amount of that same ammonia. In the streets of ancient Roman cities, one could often come across something like a bucket, where passers-by could relieve themselves. Then a person from the laundry would collect this urine and bring it to work. There, the liquid was diluted with water and used to soak dirty clothes. Romans did not have washing machines, so laundry workers had to replace them with themselves. They stood in a large tub filled with a liquid consisting of water and urine, and stomped on dirty clothes. An additional function of ammonia was that it not only cleaned clothes but also preserved their brightness from fading. But that's not all the ways in which the ancient Romans used urine. You won't believe it, but they rinsed their mouths with it. There is evidence for this, as works from that time mention that ammonia made teeth whiter. The Romans also believed that rinsing with urine freshened breath. Flamingo's tongue was considered a delicacy. It's interesting to learn what people ate thousands of years ago and what they considered a valuable delicacy. One of such dishes were flamingos, which were actively consumed in ancient Rome, but only by the upper classes. A whole bird could be roasted for a grand banquet. And if flamingos were a costly delicacy, then their tongues were even more highly prized. They were often grilled and served with sauce. Curious about what roasted flamingo tasted like? It's unlikely that any of us would have had the chance to try it. It's believed that the taste of roasted flamingo was not much different from roasted chicken or duck, after all, it's still a bird. Gladiator sweat was sold to fans. Yes, you heard that right. 
If today devoted fans are willing to pay big money for their idol's clothing or a lock of their hair, in ancient Rome, such a souvenir was the sweat and even dirt from a gladiator's body. It is well known that gladiator fights in ancient Rome were a popular form of entertainment. Some of the fighters managed to become truly famous. Special assistants would collect sweat and dirt from a gladiator's body after a fight, put it in small flasks, and sell it. But these souvenirs were not purchased just for any reason. It was believed that the sweat and dirt of a successful gladiator could pass on their physical strength. However, it is unknown what the owners of these strange souvenirs did with them, added them to their food, rubbed them on their skin, or something else entirely. This question remains unanswered. Women Gladiators Not everyone knows that there were also women among the gladiators. Unlike male fights, women's fights were a little different. Women's fights were more of an entertainment spectacle, so there was not as much cruelty as in men's gladiator fights. It was more like modern wrestling, but in gladiator costumes. Another indication that women's fights in ancient Rome were not very brutal is the fact that sometimes women from middle and even upper classes of Roman society could participate in them. However, at later stages of the Roman Empire, the Senate passed special laws prohibiting women of the upper class from participating in such events. Ancient Roman works of art and literature depicting female gladiators have also been preserved. Not all gladiators were slaves. Initially, when gladiatorial fights first appeared in ancient Rome, only slaves, such as captured foreigners or criminals, participated in them. But over time, the composition of gladiators changed. The entertainment became very popular and attracted many spectators. The excitement of the fight, the crowds of spectators, as well as the opportunity to win fame and prize money, led free men to join the ranks of gladiators. More often than not, these were former soldiers, as they had the necessary skills, but occasionally even people from the upper echelons of Roman society became gladiators, attempting to demonstrate their strength and bravery. Gladiator fights did not always end in the death of a fighter. Such fights are often portrayed in movies or TV series, but in reality, it was different. The fight between gladiators followed strict rules, and a referee oversaw it and could stop the fight. Moreover, the fight usually took place one-on-one -on -one between two gladiators of approximately the same weight category. Typically, if one of the gladiators was seriously injured, the fight was stopped. They also stopped the fight when neither fighter could gain the upper hand for an extended period. After all, gladiatorial fights were entertainment, and the audience would quickly get tired of watching a fight without a result. There is another explanation as to why gladiators often did not fight to the death. The fact is, they were similar to modern-day athletes. It took a lot of time and resources to train and equip a fighter, as well as provide them with proper nutrition. Gladiator school owners did not want to lose their investments in the first fight. However, despite this, the average lifespan of most gladiators was quite short. Many of them died before the age of 25. According to historians, about one in every five or ten fights resulted in the death of a gladiator. Gladiators rarely fought against animals. Often in movies you can see gladiators battling with wild animals. Such fights did occur, but they were very rare. Only certain types of gladiators could participate in battles with animals. And animals were not always wild. In addition to crocodiles, bears, and lions, gladiators fought against dogs and bulls. Wild animals also served as a popular form of execution in ancient Rome. Criminals sentenced to death were often thrown to hungry beasts. And, perhaps most interestingly, this was a form of entertainment that attracted many people. What are your thoughts about living in ancient Rome? How do you imagine life would have been like during that time period? If you found the video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon to stay updated on new videos, and feel free to leave your comments below.